Hello everyone, this is Professor Ng Chi Kun from Unimas. In this video, I'm going to give you a lecture on pre-stressed concrete technology, which is lecture 1, part 2. So in this lecture, we are going to look at the pre-stressing operations. Huh? Okay, so the first pre-stressing operation that we are we will be looking at is the pre-tensioning operations. Huh? Okay, so remember that pre-stressing is a general uh, concept. Okay, and then in uh, pre-stressing operations, we have a few methods. So the first method is what we call as pre-tensioning operation. So the word pre here meaning that the pre-stressing steel is tensioned before concrete is cast. Huh? Okay, that's why we use pre. Pre meaning that we tension the steel before we cast the concrete. So the tensioning of the steel can be achieved by electrothermal method or mechanical method. So electrothermal method is not popular at the present time because it's very hard to control the amount of deformation in the steel okay, as compared to mechanical method. So mechanical method is by using hydraulic jacks. Huh? Okay, We jack the steel and we tension the steel by the machines Okay, which is uh, hydraulic jacks. Huh? Uh, the most common type of jack is hydraulic jacks. Okay, so the pre-stressing force is transferred after concrete has hardened. Okay, so let me explain this uh, process uh, using an illustration. All right, so in this case, we need some uh, anchorage. Uh, we need some anchorage blocks. Okay, at the ends of the pre-stressing steel. All right. And then these abutments here, okay, we have preview holes, okay, we have holes, okay, in the abutments so that we can push the pre stressing steel through, huh? okay. So at one end we put a, we put an anchorage to the steel that we are going to tension, and then at the other end we put a jack, right? So normally this is a hydraulic jack. So once the hydraulic jack is operated, then the steel will be elongated, okay, will be pulled and then stressed, okay, by this jack. So this steel will already be in tension uh, after you have jacked the steel, alright. And then before you jack the steel, normally you will already put in the moulds uh, to cast your concrete, and these moulds will, will have also holes for the steel to pass through. Alright, so we put the moles for the length of the structures that we want to cast. Yeah? Okay, so we put the formwork in, in first and then we put the steel in there and then jack the steel and so that the steel will be in tension. So after we have done the jacking and putting in the mole, okay, then we can start to pour the concrete. Okay, so after we have poured the concrete, then we wait for the concrete to harden. Right. So once the concrete has reached uh, certain strength, that we we think we can transfer the pre-stressing force already. So therefore, we cut the pre-stressing steel uh, at certain location. So for example, for this beam, we may cut here and here so that the pre-stressing force will be immediately transferred onto this beam here. Okay, as well as for this beam as well, we may cut here and here so that the pre-stressing steel or the pre-stressing force will be, cons will be transferred to the beam immediately. Okay, so since the action of the steel onto the concrete is a compression force onto the 
concrete structures. Eh? Okay, so therefore the beam may be shortened by a by an amount delta. So originally we have length L, and then because of the action of the pre-stressing steel, which is exerting a compressive force on the structures, then the structure will shorten by an amount of delta. Okay, so this is how pre-tensioning operation works. Huh? So we must have abutments to resist the the tensile stress in the steel first, okay, before it's being transferred onto the concrete when it hardens, right? So meaning that before the concrete hardens, there is no pre-stressing force being transferred to the concrete. Eh? So meaning that we stress the steel before we cast the concrete. So that's why it's called pre-tensioning pre operation, right? And then the next uh, slide shows some typical cross-section for pre-tensioning operations. So normally pre-tensioning operations involve casting of uh, precast sections. Eh? Okay, so normally precast section they are pre-stressed. So we may have double T sections, we have a single T sections, we have a, may have L-shaped beams, we may have a holocaust labs like this. We may have uh, inverted T beams, so L beams and inverted T beams. They are mostly for uh, precast building constructions, huh? and then double T and single T. They are mostly for highway constructions, and then uh, double T wall panels. This is mostly used for slabs of buildings, as well as hollow core is mostly used for slabs for buildings. And then we have uh, PAL sections, so these are used for PALs. And then we have eye girders, these are mostly for highway constructions. Right? And then ship PALs, okay, for PALing purposes. Okay? So we may produce uh, non-typical shapes like these eh, when we are doing precast. So precast normally involves pre-tensioning operation. And then the next pre-stretching operations, it can be post-tensioning operations. Okay, so post meaning that we stress the steel after we cast the concrete, as opposed to pre-tensioning, we stress the steel before we cast the concrete. Okay, in post-tensioning, we stress the steel after casting the concrete. Okay, so the pre-stressing steel is tensioned uh, after concrete is hardened. Okay, is cast and hardened. Uh. Okay, so in this case, plastic or metal sheaths plate will, will be placed in uh, concrete as passages for the pre-stressing steel. So we may we have to leave some passageways uh, for the pre-stressing steel uh, because we are going to stress the steel after we've cast the concrete. So we first we make the steel not bonded to the concrete eh, by giving it some passageway eh, by providing plastic or metal sheaths eh, placed in the concrete. And then this post-tensioning operation, they are mostly based on patented mechanical systems eh, using hydraulic jacks such as VSL, Fresinet and BBR. Okay, so normally they are patented systems. Eh? Okay, so we have to buy from these companies which own the patents of the pre stressing system. So in this illustration here, okay, we may see how the construction of a post tensioning operation is being carried out. Eh? So first of all, we put uh, plastic or steel sheaths in the structures, okay, and then we put in the pre-stressing steel, right? So after you have put in the pre-stressing steel, we don't jack it first, huh? okay? So once all the steel and ducting, once the ducting and steel are already 
secured in place then we pour concrete and then wait for the concrete to harden to achieve certain strength that we say that it's ready to be pre-stressed okay so then we install jack at one end and anchorage at the other end okay so in this case the pre-stressing steel may be jack in a sequence okay depending on the construction sequence eh? okay so this pre-stressing steel may be jack for the first stage here okay and then after another stage of construction it may be jack from the other side eh? okay where this end is anchored and is jack from the other side so this jacking sequences may be three four times eh, depending on the design of the construction stages right so once all the pre-stressing is done all the stages of uh, and all the sequence of uh, jacking has been done then we will have to inject grout eh, into the ducting right so when you want to inject grout there must be some venting tubes eh? So these venting tubes must has been installed uh, previously before the concrete is cast. Okay, so these are the passageway for the A to come out when you inject grout into the steel or uh, plastic sheathing. Uh, okay, so that the pre-stressing steel is protected from uh, corrosion as well as make sure that the steel is bonded to the structures okay so there are two functions of the grout huh? so first function is to uh, protect the steel from corrosion the second function is to make sure that the steel is bonded to the concrete structures right and then this is how a post tensioning operation is being done this is a hydraulic jack and you see that all these are the pre-stressing steel passing through the jacks and then the jack will grip onto this uh, pre-stressing steel and pull it to tension the pre-stressing steel eh? okay so this is a very typical post tensioning operations it involve jacks and also hooks eh? and machineries to hold this jack in place Okay, so this is the illustration of an anchor block with the pre-stressing steel passing through the anchor blocks. This is the concrete structures. Okay, so we place the hydraulic jacks here and then pull the steel and then this steel will be in tension and then they will be anchored by these devices here which we call wedges. Okay, wedges and this is the anchor block right and then the next pre-stressing operation is chemical pre-stressing operation so this chemical pre-stressing op operation is not very popular okay because uh, it's very hard to control the amount of uh, stressing eh, in this method so in this method the tendons are pre-placed and tension in the forms and cast the concrete okay so the tendons are not tensioned eh? they are just placed in the form works and then the concrete is cast less, just like uh, normal reinforced concrete okay but the materials that we use to cast the concrete is expensive cement eh? Okay, used in the concrete mix so the concrete may expand when it hardens so when the concrete expands then it will pull the steel in tension okay so when the steel in tension then the reaction is compression on the concrete okay so in this case we may control the the stress that we uh, impose uh, or deliberately creating some internal stresses in the concrete by the expansion of concrete that tension the steel 
So as I mentioned just now, uh, it's not popular nowadays due to the difficulty of controlling the concrete expansion. Okay, so that's why it's not popular because it's very hard to control the concrete deformation or the concrete expansion in this case. Okay, so that's all for the lecture in this uh, lecture one, part two, for the uh, pre-stress concrete technology. Thank you very much for watching.